station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I am ready for the event. Good morning, America. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Uh, station, this is ABC News. How do you read us? Hi, good morning. I hear you loud and clear. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear as well. So let's start with, you You know, you're going to break a record, and I know records are made to be broken, but how significant is this record in terms of what we learn about human beings and our endurance for long-term space travel? Well, hey, Gina, good morning, and uh, welcome back. It's great to have you with us on the International Space Station once again. Uh, you know, it's an honor to be able to uh, be considered uh, one of the people that's going to have spent uh, a year in space. And so, um, yeah, for sure, this record will soon be broken again, uh, and that's great because that means we're continuing to press forward. Uh, and I think this is really significant in the sense that it teaches us that the human body can endure, it can adapt, and as we prepare to push uh, back to the moon and then from then, uh, onward onto hopefully Mars and further on in the solar system, I think it's really important that we learn just how the human body uh, learns to adapt and how we can optimize that process so that we can improve our performance as we explore further and further out from Earth. As a physician, what changes have you noticed in your body? I noticed, I knew some astronauts that they got taller in space. Uh, did you sleep better? Did you sleep worse? I mean, how have you documented your year in space for yourself physically? Yeah, you know, we actually uh, just measured ourselves the other day for our return trip because uh, you got to make sure you still fit in your spacesuit, your pressure suit, and your seat uh, in the Soyuz. And uh, it looked like I had grown for uh, about three centimeters. Uh, unfortunately, that is not a permanent change. Uh, you know, it's essentially, your um, your discs in your spine tend to expand a little bit because of that lack of gravitational pressure. And so that change uh, goes back to your normal uh, within about two weeks of getting back to Earth. Um, you also see a lot of fluid shifts up here. Again, because of the lack of gravity, a lot of the fluid that normally sits in our legs will turn, um, will, will tend to come up in your body. And essentially, you know, you get a little bit of uh, more fluid in your face and your upper body. You adjust uh, quite a bit in your first month here but that tends to be a permanent change while you're here. And again, once you go back to Earth, uh, all the fluid uh, redistributes itself within the body and you pretty much go back to your normal appearance uh, within a couple of weeks. Talk to you about sleeping in space. I know they've made changes in the space station with lighting. What, what is sleep like on the space station? Better, worse? How, how much better or worse did you sleep up there? Well, you know, for me, it's been wonderful, to be honest. Uh, again, I've had a 25-year Army career, so I've been really rough on my body between a lot of helicopter j landings, a lot of military uh, jumps and skydives. Uh, I've done a lot to, to essentially earn some of the bumps and bruises that I've had in, uh, in my body. And so uh, the pressure that you feel in bed uh, while you're on Earth is completely gone up here. And so you're completely decompressed, especially your neck and your spine. Uh, and so for me, that's been wonderful. Uh, you tend to just float in your sleeping bag. Your sleeping bag is really more to keep you in place so that you're not going around bumping everything in the middle of the night. Um, and as far as the lighting, it's perfectly dark in our crew quarters. Uh, I turn off my computer and, and it's dark. Uh, there is kind of a permanent uh, sound on station and that's because of all the life support equipment that we have that has to run permanently. Uh, but honestly, that makes for some great white noise. So I've actually slept better in the last uh, 10 months than I have in a long, long time. We talked to Laurel O'Hare, who's coming up next month, September, and uh, she's looking forward to giving you a hug and bringing some treats. What advice are you going to be giving Laurel before she launches? What, are you, what tips are you giving her? Yeah, I'm obviously super excited to see Laurel, both because she's a great friend and also because it means it's time to go home. Um, but yeah, Laurel's going to do fantastic. I mean, we all get fabulous training. We have an amazing support team on the ground that just gets us so ready for this mission. 
so I know she's going to knock it out of the park when she's up here. Uh, and I would just tell her to, to really just take the time to enjoy it. Um, just like any job, it's really easy to get, uh, lose yourself in the work and focus so much on getting it right and doing a great job, which obviously is very important up here. Uh, but every once in a while, you just got to force yourself to look up, or in this case, look down, uh, look down the window, uh, out of the cupola, and just enjoy the beautiful uh, view. And really just take a moment to appreciate how blessed and how lucky we are to have this opportunity and enjoy uh, where we are. Part of what I think is interesting to people about life on the space station is your food. Um, do you get much choice in food? Uh, you know, what were your favorites? What hacks did you find up there for your diet? Yeah, you know, we actually get really uh, great food. The one downside is that we have to rehydrate most of it. Uh, some of it comes in uh, the same little green packets that you see in military MREs uh, or cans, uh, especially some of the international partners tend to have a lot of their food in cans. Uh, but it's, it all generally tastes delicious. Um, but what I'm really, really looking forward to is just fresh food. I'm actually looking forward to a salad, uh, not necessarily because it's healthy, but just having fresh green uh, food is going to be fantastic. Uh, every once in a while in the resupply vehicles that come up, we'll get fresh fruit. And um, especially the citrus, because it keeps well, we tend to get a lot of citrus. Uh, you'll spend just as much time smelling the peel of an orange as you do enjoying uh, the orange itself. And that's just because of that freshness uh, and, and that smell of uh, home that you get uh, for that those few minutes. I, I think... Some astronauts that I've spoken to, I'm going to, like, jump over to spacewalk because that really is a highlight of anyone's career. Can you take me back on what that first moment was the first time you stepped outside? Yeah, it's, it's amazing uh, that it's been so long already. Uh, you know, and I was blessed to be able to do three uh, spacewalks myself and then take part in eight spacewalks total while we, uh, we've been up here. And um, it's almost just as uh, neat to watch your friends go out the door as it is to go out, out the door yourself. And to a large degree, to be honest, it's a little more nerve-wracking because you're responsible for putting them in the suit, making sure that everything's done properly so that they're safe out there. Uh, so in some ways, I felt a lot more pressure when I was putting my buddies in the spacesuit to go outside than I did when I was uh, going outside myself. Um, but I'll tell you, that, yeah, the, the views are just uh, out of this world, literally. Uh, and that's because you have your full peripheral vision. When, when you're looking out of the cupola, it's an absolutely beautiful view, but you're generally limit to, limited to just kind of looking down. Whereas when you're outside, um, the helmet just allows us to see a little bit wider than 180. And so you're able to uh, have an unobstructed view of the Earth uh, and the universe. And it just makes you really appreciate how tiny we are, uh, where we are, also, how fast we're going. I mean, the movement, you would just appreciate it so much more when you're outside. So absolutely, I would agree. Uh, those three spacewalks for me were uh, the highlight of this year up here. I'm trying to remember, for your first spacewalk when you went out, were you in light or darkness? Oh, boy. Uh, you know, I don't remember exactly. I think for the first few minutes, we were in darkness, uh, and then it became light. Uh, and I was fortunate that I felt pretty comfortable outside. Uh, pretty quickly again going back to that amazing training that we have and we have the neutral buoyancy lab so it really felt like i was uh doing a run in in the pool um and so i felt pretty comfortable out there and i i really you know you feel like a little kid uh just in the weightlessness enjoying that view and appreciating that you're in your own little private spaceship uh in your spacesuit um and in that environment and so um i had a few minutes to what we call adapt outside and essentially get used to the suit and I really just kind of spent it all looking all around uh, and doing all sorts of movements because I was just having so much fun. So it sounds like if you kept a journal, I'm going to, like, move on to that. This, the spacewalks would have been a highlight in your journal of my year in space. Did you kind of journal your year in space? What did you do to document that for you and for your family? Yeah, you know, I actually, um, sadly enough, I didn't at first. And then just uh, recently, within the last few months, I have started to do that because I realized uh, my memory wasn't as good as I thought it was. And that's just, again, because we, we do so much up here. We're so busy. 
that you quickly uh, start to forget some of the things you did early on. Uh, so I started to keep a journal. Uh, I think it'll be, um, you know, super valuable down the road and just to be able to look back and appreciate what this experience meant to us. You know, hopefully I'm able to uh, take part in many more missions. Uh, well, at least one or two more. We'll see uh, what's in store. Um, but the reality, I think the thing that I'll remember the most are my crewmates. I've been lucky enough to fly with four different crews uh, by the time I leave, and uh, that's been fantastic. The teams that we've worked with on the ground uh, have been phenomenal. So like a lot of things in life that have uh, tremendous experiences, what you end up really remembering the most are the people, and that's been the case absolutely up here. Uh, you sort of led into my next question. As a first mission, this one was really pretty epic. What could possibly be better than this? What would your dream mission be, your next one? Well, you know, I, I think um, I'm, what I plan on doing, at least, is really trying not to focus on that. Uh, I think it's really going to be important to go back, go home, and uh, reconnect with my family, first and foremost, because a year is a long time. And I've missed a lot of uh, major milestones for our family. So I think I'm going to focus on that. Uh, and then the reality is, I mean, I have friends that are going to be coming up here and then uh, going around the moon. And so my focus is going to be to help the team prepare for those missions, uh, do everything I can to contribute to, to their success. And then once I get assigned uh, down the road, we'll see what that mission holds. Uh, but I'll start to focus on that mission when the time comes. But uh, there's a lot of uh, things in between now and then that I think uh, need to be a priority before I start thinking about that. It's been interesting watching your crew on orbit because you, you make it a priority to talk to school kids. Um, I think you're promoting education and STEM for children. Out of all the kids groups that you've talked to, you've spoken with, what questions do you remember that really set you thinking? You know, I'm laughing because I actually had a meeting uh, just yesterday with some kids, uh, cutest kids you've ever seen. They were all, uh, a lot of them, I should say, were uh, in the four to six-year-old group. Uh, so I had two questions that I really loved. One was, uh, had I seen any T-Rexes in space? And unfortunately, I had to say no to that. And then the other one was if I had seen any mermaids, because I had described uh, what looking at the ocean is like uh, from up here. And so, um, unfortunately, I had not seen either T-Rexes or mermaids, uh, but I just love the fact that we can enjoy the kids' curiosity uh, and hopefully inspire them to great things later on in the future. I think it's interesting because one thing that the space station has proven to be very valuable with in the past, hopefully you have a slow hurricane season this year, but Earth observations from space and what it teaches us about our planet. What do you think you've learned about our planet from observing Earth for a year? Well, yeah, absolutely. You get a, a very different perspective being up here. Uh, the biggest one is how unique our planet is, right? You look out uh, at the rest of our solar system, and uh, all you see for, in general is darkness. Uh, and I think we just have to appreciate how special our planet is and do our best to ensure that future generations are able to enjoy uh, our planet just as much as we have been able to. Uh, the other thing that you really appreciate is the fact that there are no borders uh, and the fact that um, we as humanity can do amazing things. I mean, we've had humans in space now for 23 continuous years, and um, I don't think most people really appreciate how difficult this is and what a team effort it really is uh, to have this achievement. And so um, the fact that you look, can look down and say, man, if we work together, we can do some amazing things. Uh, so all those things, you know, they kind of sound philosophical, but just uh, you, you learn to appreciate the fact that you're living it every day while you're up here. You're coming home in another month. Tell me what the process is for returning home. You just don't hop in a car and drive home. How does, is your body monitored, and what is the adjustment like for returning to Earth from space? Yeah, so kind of uh, going back to your previous question, again, uh, there's only been a handful of us that have been up here for this long. And so they try to capture as much science as they can uh, as quickly as they can because our bodies are just so good at readapting. Um, so as soon as we land, again, I, I came up on a uh, Russian uh, spacecraft, so I'll also go back and we'll land in uh, Kazakhstan. And there'll be a NASA team there uh, ready to fly me back to Houston. 
but right away uh, they get you in this medical tent and they start doing uh, testing uh, from a, about 10 minutes after you land. Uh, and we gather as much data as we can before we get on the uh, NASA plane, which then flies us back to Houston. And within about 24 hours of uh, landing, you're landing back in Houston and seeing uh, your family for the first time. Um, you know, after about six months in space, most people uh, have a little bit of a hard time with their vestibular system and their equilibrium. Uh, so after 12 months, uh, that can be a challenge uh, even more so. Uh, although some people have done amazingly well. So I'm not sure how it'll be for me. Uh, I'm preparing for the fact that it might be a challenge and that it might take a couple days before I'm somewhat normal. Uh, but the reality is it's going to take anywhere from two to six months uh, to, of really intense rehab to get back to my normal. Uh, you know, and that's just part of the process. What You've talked about missing salads, but coming home, what are you looking forward to most? Your family, I'm sure, a shower, a walk on the beach. TikTok for me what you're, you're looking forward to. Yeah, well, I think you just named them all. Absolutely, time with my family. Uh, again, um, you know, we've been able to stay in touch really well. We get phone calls. We get video conferences every once in a while. Uh, but it, there's nothing like being there in person. And so just being able to reconnect with my kids and my wife, uh, that's going to be fantastic. Uh, being outside, again, um, we get fantastic views up here, but we're limited to the space of about a five-bedroom home. Uh, and so it's a very small space, um, you know, to, to be in for a full year. And the other thing for me especially is that I've only been exposed to about uh, six other humans at a time for the past year. And so it's going to be a little bit of a readaptation to be around crowds uh, and big groups of people. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, slowly but surely getting to see all my friends and reconnecting with them, too. And in closing, are there any favorite gymnastic tricks you've learned as you've mastered zero G up there? Anything you care to show us? Well, you know, I think one of the hardest things for people to really understand is the fact that um, you just don't have a sensation of up and down, right? So if I jump up on the sidewall here, my body quickly adjusts to the fact that now this is my up and down. And so you, you might see me uh, essentially standing on the wall, uh, but it's amazing how quickly your brain adapts to just reference this now being up and down for me. And so something as simple as this for me is just super cool to appreciate, uh, again, how adaptable uh, our bodies and our brains are. Um, so yeah, of course, you know, every once in a while we'll zoom around the uh, space station as fast as we can, especially as you get more comfortable. But there's so much sensitive equipment up here, you really uh, try to take it easy to make sure that uh, everything stays where it's supposed to be. Frank Rubio, thank you so much for your time today. Godspeed. All right, Gina, thanks again. It's been an honor and a pleasure, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants from Good Morning America. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.